the synthetic division way for this one because I don't want you guys to be scared of synthetic division. So ladies and gentlemen, let's forget we had the I. Let's forget about the I. If I told you that 5 was a 0 of this polynomial, what would you do to prove it? You could use synthetic division. You could also use the remainder. remainder theorem, right? Where you evaluate this function at 5. And if you got 0, then you know it would be um, a 0 of it. But we want to use synthetic division because we want to see the resulting factor, right? So I would use um, synthetic division. So what do you think? Do you think there's going to be a difference then if I just say now it's going to be 5i? No, just go ahead and you do the same thing. Prove it. Since it's a 0, synthetic division is going to work. So 5i, you might want to leave a little bit extra space between your coefficients when doing this, just because you're going to get some binomials. So I bring down the 2. 2 times 5i is 10i, right? We, that's why this is why we practice the adding, subtracting, multiplying them. So then I have 3 plus 10i, which is going to be 3 plus 10i. Then you multiply. 5i times 3 is 15i. 5i times 10i is going to be 50i squared. i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times um, 50 is negative 50. So then you get 15i. 15i times 5i is going to be 75i squared. i squared is negative 1. Okay, do you guys see how I prove this? All right, so just use synthetic division. It's just adding and multiplying complex numbers. It's not, it's not terribly difficult. But now, here's the important thing you guys need to understand. Just like when we had square roots, when we have complex numbers, we have to include the negative, the, negative, the conjugate, right? Because remember, to get complex numbers, we were saying that's the square root of negative 1. So your square root, you're going to have the plus or minus every single time. So I need to continue down because if you guys look at this resulting factor, these are my coefficients. These do not look like pretty coefficients, do they? No. You can still factor them just like any other numbers. However, let's keep on factoring this down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue factoring this now with my Now I'm going to factor them with uh, my new coefficients and my negative 5i. So again, let's just follow the process. Bring down the 2. 2 times negative 5i is negative 10i. Got down 3. 3 times negative 5i, negative 15i. So therefore, that becomes 0. And I'm left with my resulting polynomial or factor is going to be 2x plus 3, right? As that's my remainder, constant, linear term. So therefore, my zeros. That, after you do it twice? Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. now this is your last factor, right? So we know my zeros are 5i, negative 5i, that's the given. And then how do you write this as a zero? Well, remember, if it's a factor, factors, what do we do? Remember when we had two factors multiplied to give you your polynomial? Yeah. Right? Do you guys, what do we do after that? What do we have to use? If I said find, if I said find the zeros, right? If I said find the zeros, first thing you had to do is set it equal to zero, right? You always set your polynomial equal to zero. That was the first thing we did. Then you factored it. Then what do you do? From here, what's the next step? Set them both equal to zero, right? Because of the zero product property. So if this is a factor, to find the zero, I set it equal to zero. Because remember, it's a factor. So you, by using the zero product property, you set it equal to zero. So x equals a negative three halves. So your last zero is negative three over two. OK? That's it. That's good. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. All right, I'll never see